Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to the opening of FedEx. And uh, a real privilege for me to be here to you today to give you a little bit of a view of where I think the future is going and the great opportunity for all of us. And I'd like to start today with probably sharing something with you that all of you in the audience are probably the last generation of the unconnected generation. We are the last of the unconnected because in the future, everything will be connected. Why do I say that? Well, I've got some proof points I'd like to take you through just a little bit. Well, we know already today we can actually see devices all over the world being connected. You can see as much as I can. These things actually exist today already. However, what I'd like to propose to you is that we can see already in the next five to ten years that around 50 billion devices will be connected. Because of the new technology that's coming through, the concept of always on, always being connected, anywhere, anytime, is now finally a true reality. And I brought another few proof points with me to share with you kind of the vision that I think we're all going to head into from a journey point of view. But before we talk about the future, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take you back to the past a little bit. Because it's actually the past is very, very insightful for us because we're almost at the same inflection point as our ancestors were 130 years ago, the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. If you take your mind back to 130 years ago, what was going on? Well, it's the first time mass production came. Big assembly lines, big tall buildings, skyscrapers, steel buildings. The automobile came, the airplane, electricity, the car telephone. Can you imagine what our ancestors, what they must have felt? Their entire world was changing in front of them. How can they cope with that? What was the impact on society? And if you think about society's big impact, you know, marketing and advertising actually started about 130 years ago. Prior to that, it was not really a, a mass market concept. And I reflect back to these times because that's exactly where we are today. And the things I'm about to show you you're probably going to get a bit nervous as well, and you're probably going to get a little bit scared, just like our ancestors were 130 years ago. I have this little clip here of uh, Charlie Chaplin, because I don't know if you remember, but when the movies came out for the first time, people actually thought it was real. Right? People watched this stuff for the first time on TV, and you know what many people did? is They ran out of the movie theater, because they were so scared that maybe a train or a plane was coming for them. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? My proposal to you is, don't be in that same position. I'm going to give you a little snapshot of the future, and please don't run out of the movie theater. <laughs> you need to embrace it, accept it, and help me accelerate it, because it's going to be a lot of fun. So some proof points for you. Here's some lunacy. There are 6 billion mobile phones in the world, and only 4.5 billion toothbrushes. I think that's, there's something wrong there. <laughs> Personally, I think you should brush your teeth more than you should use your mobile phone. This is a problem, but this is a reality. This is a reality, this is a proof point. In India, there are more mobile phones than people have access to drinking water. That's not right. Something's going on there. Today, a mobile phone, the mobile phone that you have with you, has the processing power equivalent to a PC from 2001. That's how fast the acceleration is going. So you've got to ask yourself, well, what's the future going to look like? And you know, what does a connected world look like? So I brought a couple of proof points to just share with you what's happening right now. Now, this is a picture of a tube station in uh, South Korea. And you can see there's a lady there that's actually taking her mobile phone and taking pictures of um, items that she'd like to buy. Now, none of those items are real. Right? There, there's no fruit there, there are no drinks, those are pictures. And what, what is possible today in South Korea is you take a picture and you basically request your purchased item to either be delivered in your office or be delivered at home. We don't do that here in Europe, right? we don't do that in the States, but we're doing that in Asia already. So you can see that there's these different fluctuation points and advancements in society happening all over the place. This is today. Can you imagine what's going to happen in the next 50 years? In the UK, Cambridge University, 
they actually have the ability for plants to treat you with any one. Today, your plant can treat you and say, oh, wait, hey, you forgot about me, and I have a drink. That's possible today. Just imagine if you apply that technology to your great creativity and innovation. Here in Germany, very proud, fantastic industrial capability, great car industry, some of the best cars in the world are produced here. There's an application already available, and I think these colleagues here are actually here at the, at the convention. You can actually drive your car with an app on your iPhone. It's all possible right now. There's no new technology here. This is all here right now. In the United States, MIT is working on something called smart furniture. Smart furniture, no, it doesn't talk to you, but what smart furniture does is that you might actually be with friends, your parents, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, and you can actually be having a conversation about anything. You can talk about politics, you can talk about a movie, and while you're talking, your furniture will actually augment your conversation by putting pictures on the coffee table to help explain and express the story that you're talking about. All that is possible right now. Can you imagine where we're going? Business will change. You know, today, isn't it kind of silly that we go to work? And yes, we're on holiday, but maybe I'll just check real quick and do a few emails. It's 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock without my wife knowing about it. And uh, lo and behold, you know what? When I get back to work, it's going to be less stressful because I'm all caught up. These are capabilities that are now possible. And I think in the future, I think cities are going to change in the future. We won't necessarily have to drive into towns. That's a concept from the 1880s. That's a concept from the Industrial Revolution. In the future, what we can actually do is work anywhere, anytime. And we can do that already. So think how that's going to accelerate in the future. Now, we've seen miraculous activity in the Middle East. That would have never been possible if we didn't have the tools the mobile concept, Twitter, Facebook, you know, the, the revolution that we've seen in the, in the Middle East is just extraordinary. And it's not over yet, but it does definitely accelerate uh, democracy. I think the rude awakening is that this is just not um, solely uh, something in the Middle East. This is actually going to come to Europe, it's going to come to the US, and it's going to give us all a voice. It's going to give us a lot more say in what we want from our politicians, of what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. We can do that today. Look how countries are changing before our eyes. Just try to imagine where it's going to go in the next 15 to 20 years. As a matter of fact, all of you are referred to today as the generation flux. The generation flux means that you're actually, you're used to things moving quicker. You're used to kind of moving jobs a little bit sooner. You're used to more change than other people. You are the beginning of the generation flux. Can you imagine what's going to happen in the next 20 to 50 years? This is really extraordinary because the way technology and companies are going forward, that if actually Facebook was a country, it would be the third largest country in the world. In fact, it would be three, four times the size of the United States. In the future, how many more companies will be bigger than countries? I submit to you an awful lot. Facebook is not a one-off phenomenon. There will be other companies following in their footsteps, enriching their reach, their social oh, commitment, and you're going to see a whole different concept of businesses going forward. In the olden days, we talked about things from an analog point of view. You know, we used to go to school and universities. We had to go to places. We had to read physical books. The future of a connected world is actually going to be a lot different. Everything will be digital. As we know, many of you or many of us that will be going to university in a couple of years, we will actually be learning material that hasn't been written yet. Today, in order to be a startup, all you need to have is a brain. If you've got a brain, guess what? You're a startup. If you want to go to market, all you need is a PC. If you want to do mass communication, all you need is a good idea and a mobile phone. And you know what? You can do it if you're 10 years old. Right? There are no more limits. Can you imagine what that's going to be? I mean, today we talk about gigabytes and megabytes, and I bet half of us in the room don't even really understand what that means. In the future, we're going to talk about petabytes and yoyotabytes. 
What is a Yoyota byte? A Yoyota, Yoyota byte, if you use your bandwidth that you have today and you want to download a Yoyota byte, it will take you 11 trillion years. <laughs> you laugh. In the next 50 years, that's maybe the way we speak. We have no idea. You know, this looks like a really modern environment. <laughs> it's not. This is the old world. This is probably, if you go back to my little speech about the 130 years ago, this is probably, you know, thinking of a car and looking at a horse saying, this used to be our transportation. This is not how the world is going to be in the future. As a matter of fact, the world of the future is going to be about individualism and about all kinds of things. This happens to be a lunchroom at Google in Switzerland, and the only way to get in the lunchroom is on a slide. <laughs> Who would ever thought? All about individualism that's coming in the future. In an unconnected world, droughts, famine, are a thing of the, the past. In a connected world, through technology, what we can do is we can leapfrog problems. We can understand spot prices before we actually start planting things. In Africa, they're doing this today. In Africa, they're actually planting vegetation in the world where there's a shortfall. And we can actually get this through information and accessing things. In uh, Africa, they're leapfrogging banks because the people that don't have any credit. But what they're doing is they're forming credit and currency on a mobile phone that they can actually do payments to do payments of goods and services. We're not doing that here in Europe. They're doing that in Africa already today. So you can see from a connected world, we're actually going to go from fear to confidence. What we're going to do is going to go from um, being um, alone to having unity. You know, I think in a connected world, what you're actually going to see is perhaps content isn't controlled, content will be shared. Just think what that will do to your lives and to the companies that are out there. Think about a concept that where no one is unemployed. No one in the world is unemployed because the concept of having a job is outdated. And perhaps a language in the future that we all need to get to know is JavaScript instead of speaking Chinese. Absolutely. So with that, I hope I gave you a little bit of a glimpse of where we're heading, where the future is. Try to reflect on where our ancestors were 130 years ago. Help me embrace this fantastic world that we're going to go into. Seize your opportunity and make of it what you wish. Thank you very much.